as you can see in the background, we have ongoing construction of the upper spillway where they're placing leveling concrete. Critical path work we're trying to get finished by November 1st because that's when it's anticipated that the hydrology in the upper watershed gets to be less able to predict. And so we've got to have the spillway complete so if we have an early storm, we can open it up. One of the things that we need to do is to make sure we've got all the walls and the slabs in and the terminal structures, which we'll see later down, the, down at the base to dissipate the energy, all completed by November 1st. But there's an inordinate amount of work still to be completed after November 1st with overall site restoration of the entire site and uh, bringing the emergency spillway back to uh, operational configuration so if we ever did get a giant storm like we had in February of 17 we have the option of being able to use that as well. That's anticipated to be completed mid-December with uh, the potential of having that schedule expedited by some critical things that Kiewit's doing for us right now to maybe get that done by November 1st as well. We had to go through some modifications for the design with the uh, rock slopes you see. The original spillway fit within the original excavation, but when we excavated out the backfill and demoed the old spillway, we found out that the toa slopes were a little too narrow to fit the design of the new spillway in, so we had to go through some additional excavation and a slight modification in the wall designs to get everything to fit. There's been a number of issues that we've had to address. The walls up, up in the upper chute has been one. The ability to get concrete placed in large quantities at the temperature and the slumps that are necessary to meet the, meet the criteria in the specs. And Kiewit's done a great job as far as working their batch plant and, uh, and mixing methods in order to meet those criteria and the specifications that we have had set for them so that they can meet it on a daily basis. A couple of things that we learned is from the old design is to make sure that the drains don't encroach into the concrete section. So they are substantially down below the slabs this, year, this time around. There's two mats of concrete, thicker section, and the, the ability for the concrete to perform, we have found that the mixed designs that have been chosen for this project are some of the hardest that any of the people that have had associations with this project have ever seen. This is the first slab that was placed this season and it's placed with the new mix design which has slightly less cement in the mixture and larger aggregate which is to help with the uh, slow down the curing process so it doesn't cure up as fast or maybe quite as strong. We don't want it to get up to 12,000 psi like some of last year's samples did so that it's not quite as brittle and it'll also have less uh, cracking properties because it'll set up slower. We're in the middle chute of the Orville spillway and we just started this uh, wall footing slab concrete placement tonight. Probably about 70 yards that'll be placed in there before we move to the next slab. And, and what you see in the background is uh, of course the rebar that's in the footing slab, but one of the neat things we did on this job to accelerate the schedule was pre-tie the wall cages out on uh, the grade beside the spillway, and then we would fly them in and, and tie them in place. Uh, that allows us to not have to have rebar tying operations uh, yeah, sequentially after the slab's poured. We can um, wait for the cure on the slab and get the wall started. So it does take a little extra steel. A, a template to hold the wall cage up, but the savings, uh, time savings benefit is way uh, offsets the cost of uh, doing the extra rebar. We're standing on top of the gated structure which releases water down the spillway, and behind me you see the emergency spillway. This is the weir at uh, roughly elevation 901 that passes water over. Uh, releases water over the top so that it doesn't go over the dam. It's separated from the dam. The dam is about a half a mile to, you, to the back of you. You can see in the background is the new placement of roller compacted concrete which is in a stair-step fashion to minimize the energy of the water as it cascades down the slope. What is placed right now is the phase one portion of the emergency spillway. They're getting ready to start phase two construction. They're finishing the foundation prep, which is the dirt area you see here, by cleaning off all the, the not good rock and dirt and getting down the competent material. 
so that they can uh, bond the roller compacted concrete to the rock. And it'll continue the, the lines and the elevations that were placed in phase one over through phase two up to this emergency spillway structure, which they called monoliths. And then they're going to buttress the back side of those to provide some additional overturning support. So as we as we work towards the spillway gates, we're going to see various levels of completion of the foundation prep getting ready for the final slab construction. So this is preliminary clean. Then you can start seeing the preliminary drainage forms going in, the blockouts. It's built of stay form. And then, then, the, then we'll start seeing leveling concrete. And so th those operations are all working this way. And within a couple weeks, we'll be able to start slab form pour strip up, up here. Leveling concrete operations in full swing today. That's the first lift going down on the previously cleaned and accepted foundation. Typically, it's two to three lifts of leveling concrete to get up to the subgrade where the slabs will go, uh, which will be inspected later on today. And then the leveling concrete will advance to this area so that we can cover up this foundation and, and then again proceed to, to getting the drain lines put in and and the slab anchors and then we'll proceed with the, the uh, concrete slabs.